Welcome back to the Hardware Unbox News Corner. Surprisingly big week of news for December. Lots of topics to get through, including all the news from Intel's architecture event, new features in AMD Radeon drivers, and lots more. So let's get into it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Deepcool and their excellent Matrix 55 case. We recently used this case in our budget 1080p build and we're impressed with the three included 120mm RGB fans in the front and an expansive tempered glass side panel, all for an MSRP of just $75 US. Check it out, links in the description. So the big news from this week is all of the announcements Intel made at their Architecture Day 2018. This wasn't an event where Intel launched any specific products, rather they spent a lot of time discussing their roadmap for 2019, what's happening with you know, 10 nanometer CPUs, new architectures, new designs, and even a little bit on GPUs. Anantech has a comprehensive article that covers everything that went down at the event. If you're interested in the more technical, nitty gritty stuff, I highly recommend heading over there and giving it a read. I'll be skipping over a lot of the more in-depth architecture discussion, but Anantech covers it fully in their article. So first up, we have Intel's CPU core roadmap for the next few years. Coming in 2019 are two new architectures. For core processors, we have Sunny Cove, which is the code name for the CPU core architecture that will be integrated into Ice Lake on 10 nanometers. On the Atom front, we also have Tremont or Tremont. Then, as you can see in the image, there's a lot of other architectures coming up, including Willow Cove and Golden Cove for core processors in 2020 and 2021, while Atom CPUs will get an architecture upgrade every second year, with Gracemont in 2021 and Nextmont in 2023. I assume that one's a bit of a code name for you know, something else to come in the future. The slide also lists some of the improvements Intel is set to make across these architectures. So for Sunny Cove, you can see Intel are targeting improved single thread performance, new instructions, and better scalability. This is in stark contrast to the last few generations, which have simply been frequency boosts. Willow Cove will bring a cache redesign, transistor optimization, and security features. Then Golden Cove in 2021 pushes ahead with a whole suite of improvements. To achieve better single thread performance, Sunny Cove is basically a wider CPU design, the details of which are shown here. Again, not going to go into all the details, but there are a few interesting changes here. Uh, Intel aren't talking specifics like core count, frequency, or stuff like that just yet, but this architecture is designed for 10 nanometers, and that's on track for 2019. Also coming with the next line of chips from Intel is a new generation of graphics. Intel's integrated graphics architecture has been extremely stale for the last few years, again hampered by Intel's struggles with process technology. But in 2019, we're finally getting Gen 11 graphics, the first major step since Gen 9 was released in 2015. So lots of improvements here. The biggest is a huge jump in execution units. For GT2 graphics, so this is Intel's most widely used graphics design for their 15 watt core U processors and their most popular desktop CPUs, Gen 11 bumps the EU count from 24 up to 64. There are lots of other improvements to the graphics architecture as well to make those EUs faster. And overall, Intel says this will allow Gen 11 GPUs to achieve more than one teraflops per second of compute performance. Previously, we were in the 400 to 450 gigaflop range, so this improvement would put Intel's integrated graphics more in line with what AMD is providing in their Ryzen mobile APUs. We should also be getting a better HEVC encoder, proper HDR tone mapping support, and adaptive sync. Intel has been promising to include adaptive sync in their GPU designs for years now, and that's finally happening with Gen 11. As for discrete desktop graphics, Intel announced these products would fall under the XE brand. Uh, that's still scheduled for 2020 with products ranging from integrated to mid-range to enthusiast to data center. Exciting times, but I guess nothing more was shared there. The final thing Intel discussed is Foveros, a new technology for 3D packaging of chips. I think it's called Foveros, might be pronounced differently. I'm going to go with Foveros. Not quite sure. Uh, this is a big step forward for how Intel is thinking about designing chips. Previously, a lot of their products were monolithic dies, but we're approaching the limits of what can be achieved on that sort of design. Intel has also dabbled in a sort of 2.5D design where they have multiple dies connected through an interposer with an interconnect technology. The company's you know, KB Lake G products that used EMIB is one such example. But with 3D stacking and Foveros, the idea is to improve on that by making the interposer active. In other words, 
Intel can offload the PCH or I.O. from the CPU dies into the interposer beneath. The CPU cores are then stacked on top. The idea is to remove some of the functions from the upper chips into the interposer, which then allows Intel to get more creative with their designs. One of the biggest changes is it should allow Intel to mix and match process technologies. For example, the interposer could be made on 22 nanometers, but the CPU cores on 10 nanometers. Intel also showed off a hybrid design using Favoros, where, as I just mentioned, the interposer is 22 nanometers and CPU cores 10 nanometers. But the cool thing about this design is it had a single high-performance Sunny Cove CPU core alongside four lower power Atom cores in the one die. So it seems like Intel is experimenting with the big little design like ARM has been doing for a while with their mobile chips. So that's a summary of the things Intel discussed at the event. For more, again, check out Anantech. What I find most interesting about this is I think Intel has been sliding under the radar of people a fair bit. There's been a lot of discussion surrounding the company's lack of progress with process technology, you know, issues with 10 nanometers and the like. Especially, I think a lot of people were expecting Intel to stagnate in 2019, while AMD reveals all these you know, massive improvements on 7 nanometers to make their CPUs more competitive with Intel's architectures, and that would make AMD dominate the market. But what seems to have been forgotten is that Intel all also has the capability to continue innovating and improving their architectures. They've actually had a lot longer than usual to do this, so we could see some very tasty competition throughout next year. I don't think it will all be about Zen 2. The other big news from this week is AMD's yearly drive overhaul, this time called, and get ready for this, AMD Radeon Software Adrenaline 2019 Edition version 18.2.2. Uh, for the past few years, AMD has released a massive driver update for their GPUs around this time, which integrates a ton of cool new features. AMD has split up the feature improvements into three categories. We've got for gamers, for enthusiasts, and for creators. For gamers, we have a set of three advisors. The Game Advisor, which adds to Radeon Overlay by providing performance metrics like FPS and 99th percentile in real time, along with recommendations for changing game settings to improve performance. Settings Advisor scans your system and suggests optimal display settings, while the Upgrade Advisor lists your installed games and suggests upgrades if you're not meeting the system requirements. The more interesting improvements for you guys will be things in the enthusiast category, considering those advisors are more geared towards mainstream gamers. What Man now has an auto overclocking and undervolting feature, though this is only for Vega GPUs. However, it seems this feature is very limited at the moment. It doesn't provide a full voltage frequency curve for auto overclocks, so it's not as well suited to Vega's dynamic GPU clocks as we'd like, and in some cases actually doesn't improve performance. AMD is not using a scanner API here like NVIDIA is, so the offsets are very conservative and static, both for overclocks and undervolting. So I think a bit more work can be done with that feature. Wattman also now supports changing GPU memory timings, which is the first for GPUs. There's also better fan curve controls and a bunch of other cool stuff. Radeon Chill has been improved for better efficiency in eSports games. There are improvements to FreeSync 2 HDR tone mapping, and Virtual Super Resolution now supports 21.9 displays. Uh, but wait, there's more. AMD has overhauled their AMD Link smartphone app with a ton of new features, including voice controls and Wattman. For creators, Relive now supports in-game replay, so you can hit a button and up to the last 30 seconds of gameplay are captured. There's GIF support, a new scene editor, and more. Gamers can also now stream their games to their mobile devices or even VR goggles using the Relive game stream feature. You download an app on iOS or Android, and then you can stream it up to 4K 60Hz, with AMD claiming 44% less latency than NVIDIA's competing solution. Oh, well, that's certainly a lot of features, and I believe the driver is available to download now if you want to check out a lot of the stuff that I've just mentioned. Okay, there's two big topics covered briefly. Let's move into some quicker stuff. Enemax has announced a new suite of LickTech 2 all-in-one liquid coolers for mainstream desktop CPUs. The basics here is that Enemax has adapted their TR4 cooler designs for other desktop CPU lights, so you still get the massive cooling capacity of their TR4 models, but a cold plate size and design that makes it compatible with small CPUs. The company has the LickTech 2 in 240, 280, and 360 millimeter sizes, offering upwards of 500 watts of heat dissipation capabilities. They are fully compatible with Intel's mainstream and HEDT CPUs on the LGA 2066, 2011, 1366, and 115X sockets, plus AMD's non-HEDT CPUs. There's a lot of cool features to these coolers, but obviously you're all interested in the RGB lighting. Yes, there's RGB here. They will be available this month, but pricing hasn't been announced. 
Gigabyte are preparing to launch the Z390 Aorus Extreme Water Force, an absolutely insane motherboard with a light show that would make Las Vegas jealous. The key feature here is a massive custom water block that covers the CPU socket, VRMs, and several other chips on the motherboard, providing the ultimate cooling for CPUs like the Core i9-9900K. The board has the same features as the regular Aorus Extreme and is set to cost even more. The Extreme is already a $550 board, so this Water Force model could come in at a really high price. A trademark for AMD Vega 2 has appeared, showing a logo with two stripes in it. This is to indicate the second generation of Vega products built on 7 nanometers, which are destined for data center applications. Not the most riveting discovery, but somewhat interesting nonetheless. Corsair has launched the Vengeance RGB Pro Light Enhancement Kit, which are essentially dummy versions of their Vengeance RGB Pro memory that provide cool RGB light effects. The idea here is that you have, say, only two of your four DIMM slots populated with RGB memory. You can add in this light enhancement kit to fill out your system and enhance the RGBness of your build. They don't add any RAM capacity to your system, but the lights are still addressable and the modules look exactly like Vengeance RGB Pro. Unfortunately, the kits are quite expensive at $40 for a two pack. Final topic for this week, Video Cards has a picture of the Gigabyte GeForce RTX 2060, which is expected to launch officially in 2019. Let's be honest, the pictures aren't super exciting because they look like a graphics card from Gigabyte. However, there is an 8-pin connector on there, though Video Cards believe the actual spec calls for just a 6-pin, and the GPU will be equipped with 30 compute units, or 1920 CUDA cores. That's the same number of CUDA cores as the GTX 1070, although clock speeds at this stage are unknown. All right, and that's it for this week's News Corner. As always, you can subscribe for more News Corner episodes in your inbox every week and hit that bell icon so you get notified properly. Consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to our exclusive Discord chat, and I'll catch you in the next one.